when Dotson sold the cars, the dealers actually had a plate that said, do it in a Dotson. And then for some of their competition stuff, they had Dare to be Different. My name's Dave Scholes, and uh, I drive a 1970 Datsun 240Z. I was always into Japanese cars. I was into traveling to Japan. And at the same time, I was also really interested in old Alfa Romeos and old Ferraris. Buddy sends me an email forwarded from a friend from work who has to move to Japan in a jiffy. It's got five or six pictures in it. Right off the bat, I can tell it's an early Series 1Z. I call up the owner, broken English, Japanese guy come on down, but you know, it's not in the best shape. And he says a number that just sounds way, way too low. So I start speaking to him in Japanese because I'm actually fluent. He comes back and he repeats the same number. I say, okay, I'll be right there. Showed up, the car's idling in the guy's driveway. He's charging the battery for me. And he's just excited that it's going to another Z enthusiast. Because of the time that it came out, you know, you have the baby boomers now saying like, I remember having that in high school. Because of that, they all told their kids that, oh, this is the first real sports car I had. You know, we used to race our buddies Trans Ams. You get so many different people walking up wanting to tell me their full story about what they did with their car. They don't want to just tell me they used to have one. They want to tell me they met their wife in this car or that they went to prom in this car and wrapped it around a pole. Here was a sports car that performed better than almost anything else you could get, faster than 911, handled better than the 2002. But it was still Japanese, so you still had the reliability and you still got the great gas mileage. And that when they raced them on the weekend, they won. I feel like that's why the 240Z is so just generally popular. My favorite aesthetic part of the 240Z is the rear three-quarter view. Because it borrows so many features and stylistic cues from late 60s, early 70s Ferraris and Alfa Romeos and Jaguars and makes it kind of into its own little design there. The style that I've gone for with my Z would be after the one that the guy who would have driven to Fuji Speedway from Yokohama. The one built in the garage, not the one built by the company for a sports car club Japan race. Engine is a Rebello three liter engine, putting about 300 horsepower on a bench dyno. Suspension is stiffened up with some T3 components, interior Nardi classic steering wheel, Willens six point harness, uh, Recaro SPG bucket. Obviously wheels and tires on this car are I think one of the biggest aesthetic and performance changes for the car. The RS Watanabe's are what that car was designed around. Quite honestly, the artists had that wheel and tire combo drawn on that vehicle. Driving the Z, it feels distinctly Japanese. The Japanese were very quirky when they started making these cars. They tried so hard to make it European is what makes it a Datsun, is what makes it that much more interesting. I call it my therapist when I go up in the canyon in the cars because you can really only focus on that one moment. Especially with the power band in this vehicle, it really does absolutely nothing below 5,000 RPM. So being up there is a place where I can hear everything from the car, the engine, the carbs, rotation of the transmission, the backfiring, shooting fire, the squeaking of the race brakes as they get hot. You can smell the 100 octane sweet smell coming in through the back of the car. So you're dizzy, you feel out of it, but the only place you really feel the car be free. I think future plans for this car are for me to keep it alive. 
So I'll have to do some under the surface restoration. You know, every one of these cars, especially the 1970s, have rust. Certainly I can wax poetically about imagining it in the back corner of the barn, me working at the tool bench with an old dog sleeping at my feet and look over and go, yeah, there's my Z. Mm-hmm.